One of the most important considerations with the ePortfolio is that you make it your own. And this is realized when you take a look at many of the examples. Every single ePortfolio is different. And even this current ePortfolio that I'm on right now, when we take a look at the home page, again, uh, this is a, a very different perspective uh, than, than you'll see in many other pages. So this is really quite important that you make the ePortfolio your own. But there still are some very consistent, important things that you need to do to ensure that your ePortfolio is very easy to navigate. You always want to think about how easy is it going to be for my audience, my learner, my colleagues, whoever your audience is, to be able to access the information. This is really important. So when we take a look at the uh, final compilation post of your ePortfolio in 5303, you want to have something along these lines. You want to submit a page, a post, or a page that will have a link to the significant topics we asked you to address. Emerging issues in EdTech, your, your readings, working through your ePortfolio development, the whole learning experience, you know, connections to your learning community, and then even your contributions to, to your learning um, community reflection. So all these key factors uh, make a make up a part of your final compilation post. And when I want to read through this, provide an introduction, I click on a particular page in, in this and I'm able to go through this page and read along. And to navigate, I hit the back button. I right click on my mouse, hit the back button. So pages aren't being spawned or opened. This is within this same structure of the website. So I click on the COVID reading reflection and there's several articles, several posts. There's a lot of different things. You can take a look at more information and I right click and I can go back. So again, the navigation is really quite easy. Um, this particular student talked about their challenges and struggles in working through WordPress and that's part of the learning process. Um, so this is an important factor. Um, and then, you know, looking at the whole ADL journey, um, the learning communities uh, contribution, you know, we encourage you to uh, explore different organizations that you can participate in. And again, um, it's easy for me to see that there's a sentence or two provide context and there's a link to the particular uh, perspective and then the contributions to the learning are posted there as well. So, and, you know, the uh, reflection is um, well done. Now, it's easy to navigate this final compilation post. All the pieces are in place. But if I want to take a look at other factors like the blog, well, guess what? There's a lot more. I can scroll through this and I can see a lot of different posts. If I want to go back to navigate this particular uh, uh, site and I couldn't remember or you know, I, I, I can hit the back button a couple of times, right? Uh, but let's say I, I, did, I, I went to another part of the site and I sort of was clicking on many different things and clicking that back button would take me a little bit too long. Well, then the next thing that is going to be really important is your navigational structure, right? So, um, th you know, when I go through this, there's summary of learning, there's cover reflection application, you know, digital uh, environments, resources, concepts, right? Applying educational technology. So yeah, okay, I can get back to this page. So there's a wonderful navigation structure with a naming convention that makes sense. Within the page itself, there will be references to different course numbers, which is fine. But the naming convention does make um, a lot of sense. One of the most important things that I want to uh, uh, bring to everyone's attention, when I click on this particular, this link, it's not a Google Doc, it's not a PDF, and it doesn't need to be. It should be a page or a post, depending on how you set up your, your website. So it, the reason that this is important, if I want to go back, I simply go back to the original um, page or post. Well, this, this, is a, this is a page within the site. So this is really important that you structure your ePortfolio in such a way that you aren't just simply giving me a link to a Google Doc or a link to a PDF, or you don't embed a Google Doc or embed a, a small version of a PDF on your website and make it difficult for me to read. You're making your user work hard. You're making it difficult for, ac for us to access your information if you're doing that. Um, unless you have very specific constraints that you have in terms of publishing a PDF, uh, formatting issues, like, you know, I'm, I'm saying don't. You can occasionally use a PDF, but minimally. And something like a literature review might be useful, uh, helpful because of the formatting. But even then, 
quite often I've seen some of the best integrated literature reviews as a page or a post within the website. So it's really important that you don't um, simply just drop a link into a Google Doc. It makes it difficult. Navigation to those types of pages is very, very difficult because then it spawns a new window or if it does, doesn't does spawn a new window, it opens in the same window. How do you, how do I get back? It's very difficult. There's no, usually there's no links. A, a Google Doc, you can put links in a Google Doc, but then linking back to your ePortfolio, it just becomes very, very complicated. So please don't do that. That's not a recommended process. Just a couple more factors you want to consider. Um, text size, good contrast, make sure that your text is easy to read. I don't have to lean in to see it uh, or any anybody else in your audience doesn't have to lean in to see it. Um, you know, the use of images, wonderful. It's great. You can embed things. So if you've got social media perspectives, you can embed them into your website. You know, take ownership, take control. This is yours. Explore, experiment. Look at the navigational structure. Now, this has come together, you know, this, this student has graduated from um, the program and has done quite well, but you can see how all the pieces come into part of their professional learning journey. Um, the blogging environment is wonderful. So this is a well-developed, well-established website that addresses all the key components that we're asking you to address within the 5303 um, assignment, ePortfolio assignment. Hopefully, I've given you some suggestions you'll find useful. Hopefully, I pointed to the fact that you want to make it easy for your audience to be able to access information. Be careful about your navigation. Don't link to Google Doc or PDFs unless it's extremely necessary for some specific reason. Focus on the navigation, focus on the structure, make it your own. Um, and, you know, again, keep in mind who's your audience. Make it, is it easy for them to access your information? If you keep that in mind, you'll do well.